Oh, yeah. I'm drowning in assets. Oh god, why are there so many assets? Oh, if only I had a way to organize them all into some kind of library folder that could, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here, be accessed from some kind of asset browser within the interface. Oh, woe is me, if only I could right click on the objects in my scene and mark them as assets for them to automatically be added to the aforementioned asset browser. And if only, I don't know, such a browser would be coming in version 3.0 of Blender, maybe at the beginning of December, and perhaps its progress could be tracked on developer.blender.org. Though this world is so cruel, such a shame, if only that would ever happen. Okay, I'll stop now. I know what some of you might be thinking. Curtis, haven't you already done a video about the asset browser? And yes, I have. I'll leave a link to that video below, but in that one we mostly talked about how the system works and how you can use it. And I did that by showing you an earlier experimental build, but in this video I'm going to talk more about why the asset browser is a good thing, how it could help you, how it could speed up your workflow and amplify your creativity, and possibly even save your life. Okay, no guarantees on that last one. So enhancing creativity. When everything is accessible to you, visually, from the interface, you are more likely to experiment and try new things. Hell, you might even forget all the stuff you had stored in your hard drive, but if it's all there in the asset browser, then why wouldn't you drag things in and see what happens? This could be objects, materials, lighting templates, etc. It can amplify your creativity by making everything accessible to you right there and then. This ties in very tightly with the idea of kit bashing, which is an old concept going back to the days of physical modeling and early film production, where you can take different parts from different model kits and put them together to make something new. This doesn't necessarily have to be just for objects. I mean, we can conceive of the idea of material kit bashing or lighting kit bashing, but we mostly think about it for modeling, and it's a very fun way of modeling because it introduces a very short self inspiration loop. As you add new objects with varying levels of scale and detail, you are inspired into new directions, into trying new things. You might think, wow, this piece looks a bit like an engine. What if I find some kind of metal casing to go around it? Now I'm making a pod racer. Wow, this is so much fun. Yay! I'm going to show all my friends. The asset browser is practically designed to do this. You'll see all your thumbnails for all your objects in the interface so you know exactly what you're bringing in, and then it's just a matter of clicking and dragging. Some people really want to play around with 3D software but they just can't get their head around the idea of modeling something from scratch, which is fine. No one should feel ashamed for that, and I think a lot of these people would be really fantastic at doing general scene composition. In my opinion, I think some people just work better at different levels of abstraction almost. Some people are fantastic at doing the nitty gritty finite modeling, and some people are just amazing at doing the more abstract general management of an entire scene. So I think the asset browser is going to make things much more accessible for those kinds of people. So if anything, I think this relatively simple feature is going to help a lot more people get into Blender. But like I said, the asset browser isn't just for objects, it's apparently going to be for entire collections. Plus, objects should also bring along the data blocks that are assigned to them. So theoretically, you should be able to bring in your weird modifier stack combinations assigned to certain objects to make whatever weird motion graphics artwork you can think of. So strictly speaking, you can slap something together in 60 seconds, sell it as an NFT, and pretend there's a deeper meaning behind it to get people to invest. Market potential. Product developers will now be able to package their content in a way that's already compatible with the asset browser. They just need to do this by marking the different pieces of content in their blend files as assets. And what this means is, after people have purchased and downloaded the blend files, all they'll need to do is put them inside of their own library folders, and then their content will be accessible in any blend file they work on. So that's super easy installation for content packages. I also think what this will do is encourage more people to make asset packs for Blender, so I think that after the asset browser becomes accessible to people in a stable version of Blender, we might slowly start to see more asset packs become available in the community and that should hopefully enrich in some of the marketplaces. So production pipelines. Imagine if you will, your entire team having a synchronized library of content that everyone can access from any blend file they work on, allowing them to append or link content, and where the content only has to be updated in one location. The asset browser functionally allows for this, provided that everyone has access to the same folder. I think this is a very cool idea and it should assist with the synergy of creative teams. Okay, what about speeding up your workflow? There are lots of different use cases for the asset browser, but I'm going to give you some examples. You could use the pose library in the asset browser to help animate characters in your scene. Perhaps you're making a short film. The pose library is something that the Blender developers are putting a bit more effort into, because I think they have more of a use case for it with the Blender Animation Studio, so there's some extra settings there to help you bring poses into your scene. There's also some extra information about that in blog posts, so I'll leave some extra information below if you need it. You could also drag lighting templates into your scene to light different objects. Say for example you're working for an advertisement client, you've made this really nice looking product render, but you don't quite I know how to light it. But hey, you were smart in the past. You made a bunch of lighting templates for your asset browser. So now you can just drag them in and now you've got perfect lighting for your object. No more needing to fiddle about and make everything from scratch. You could also assign materials to every object in your scene in a matter of seconds, and possibly even forgive everyone who's ever wronged you in your life. I think the asset browser can do almost all of those things, but there's some things that even Blender can't do. So what about the whole the asset browser could save your life thing? Well, I don't know what kind of situations you get into. If there's an infinite multiverse, eventually something's going to happen where the asset browser saves someone's life. Okay, what about you're going down the street and someone's trying to mug you and they say, "Oh." <laughs> 
oh, make me an NFT in Blender. And you say, wait, why do you want an NFT in Blender? And then they say, well, because it's more valuable than your wallet in this day and age. And you go, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess so. So you say, don't worry, I've got this fam. You whip out your Motorola V3 Razor, it's got Blender preloaded on there. You've got version 3.0 on there with the asset browser built in. So you start dragging objects in until it looks like a beautiful Beeple artwork. And then you say, hey, I'm done. It didn't take long at all. So you put it up on a crypto art store. The mug is happy. You're both rich now, and I'm sure your parents are very proud. Or, you know, in a more serious situation, maybe you're strapped for cash and you've got a client that wants you to make something. And without the asset browser, it could take you hours and hours because you need to do everything from scratch. But because you've got the asset browser, it inspired you to have better organization with your old projects. So now you have everything accessible to you. You can bring in your old content when you need it. It'll make your workflow a lot faster so you can produce something for your client in a much shorter amount of time. And maybe in this specific situation, you really needed to get that job done just so you could afford some food. Time is money and for a lot of people, money means food. So just remember how privileged you are. So why did it take so long to get here? Honestly, I don't know. There have been so many add-on developers that have tried and succeeded to various degrees to make their own asset browsers in Blender. Even I thought about doing it, but I knew that they were going to make one anyway, so I didn't because it would have become redundant. But much like with these cycles improvements, Blender always seems to be a bit late to the party with features or upgrades that other people think are essential for a 3D modeling package. On my last video about the asset browser, user James Hetherington commented, this looks like a feature people are going to wonder how they did without. And yeah, I agree with that. So if there are any young whippersnappers in the future watching this video from their flying cars thinking, wait, hold on, Blender didn't have an asset browser back in the day, sheesh. Then yeah, welcome to the dark ages. It's taken 25 years for Blender to get an asset browser. If Blender made a delivery service, nothing would turn up on time. <laughs> Look, I'm kidding. They're doing fantastic work and they should be commended for that. And the best way to show your support is to sign up to the Blender Development Fund. That way you can help to ensure that Blender keeps getting the updates and improvements that it needs to become the best software ever. You can also donate to the Curtis Development Fund. I hear they're working on version 26, which should be coming out soon. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.